Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition and lift off of Utah Thought Hopper 13G, go Falcon 9. Nominal first stage chamber pressures. Vehicles pitching down range. has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Power Force Station, nominal. carrying Utah Sat Hopper 13G satellite. Now, during ascent, the M1D engines will actually swivel and help steer Falcon 9, and this is known as gimbal. The rocket autonomously tilts the Vehicle engines. supersonic. The rocket autonomously tilts the engines just a few degrees, and this gimbling allows the vehicle to perform a gravity turn, which is when we are going vertical, but also going horizontal, and you can kind of see that on your screen there. Max Q. Great call out. We've just passed through Max Q. That is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees on ascent. After we pass through Max Q, we can now begin to throttle up the nine M1D engines on stage one. And in just about a minute, we'll have three events happening back to back. The first will be Miko stage separation and then SES-1, which is second stage engine start one. Got some really cool views. I'm back is showing in. Really cool views of those nine M1D engines on the first stage. Now Miko is main engine cutoff and that's where all nine of those engines will shut down and that prepares the vehicle for stage separation. Then stage one can make its way back down to Earth while stage two continues with SES-1 or second stage engine start one. That's where, where we will ignite that MVAC engine on the second stage for the first time for this mission. Again, coming up here in just a few seconds, we, we will have MECO stage separation and SES-1. Go. Stage separation confirmed. Evacuation. And there we could see Miko stage separation on your right hand screen. That MVAC engine is lighting up there. Coming up next, we will have fairing separation. The fairing halves flying today are flight proven, one half flying for the fourth time and the other for a sixth time. And on your left hand screen is a view of the first stage, the grid fins have now deployed. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you can see on your right hand screen, the fairing halves being jettisoned. Now we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back down to earth using our recovery ship, Bob. T plus. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. T plus four minutes into today's mission. That call out there was just uh, acquisition of signal of one of our ground stations. Now we're in the first of two planned MBAC burns prior to satellite deployment, and that's what you're seeing there on your screen is the MBAC on the second stage. The next event will be first stage entry burn, and that'll occur around T plus six minutes and 30 seconds. And you should also be able to see that on your screen. 
Now for that entry burn, we relight three M1D engines, starting with the center one, which is the E9 engine, followed shortly thereafter by E1 and E5 engines. This burn is the first of two planned burns for the first stage and slows the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. Now stage one does need to slow down to reduce the re-entry forces and that helps us to recover and reuse the vehicles. Vehicle on nominal trajectory. And great call outs. Vehicle is on nominal trajectories. That entry burn is just under a minute and a half away. And as a reminder, with a unique pan-European coverage, the high-power Hotbird satellites at 13 degrees east form one of the largest broadcasting systems in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, delivering 1,000 television channels to more than 160 million TV homes. Now, during the re-entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it's still moving very rapidly. This causes the vehicle to fly through the Merlin's exhaust gases, which is also called the rocket's plume. And this thin layer of soot from Falcon 9's carbon-based fuel kerosene is deposited onto the exterior of the vehicle. Again, entry burn for the first stage is in just under 20 seconds from now. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn startup. And as you can see, your left-hand screen light up there. Those three engines have ignited. This entry burn will last about 25 seconds long. Stage one entry burn shut down. And that concludes the entry burn for the first stage. Now, for those that might not be familiar with why we land our rockets, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical science research. And the Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission performed this entry burn for the seventh time tonight, previously launching CRS-22, Crew-3, Turksat-5B, Crew-4, CRS-25, and one Starlink mission. Now, about 30 seconds away from the next couple of events. Next up will be SECO, SECO-1, which is second stage engine cutoff one. And that's when we shut down that MVAC engine on the second stage. And, allow, stage transonic. and we allow that second stage to coast. And then shortly after- Stage C two FTS is saved. Shortly after SECO-1, we'll have the landing burn starting on the first stage. Seco. Stage one landing burn. There we've had Seco and stage one landing burn has begun. Let's watch as Falcon 9 touches down on just read the instructions. Landing leg deploy. Nominal orbit Stage one landing confirmed. And great news there and a couple of great call outs. Falcon 9 has touched down on just read the instructions. This landing marks SpaceX, uh, SpaceX's 152nd recovery of an overall class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. And we also heard SECO-1 and confirmation of good orbit. So now the mission isn't over just yet. The second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. After the coast phase, we will light that MVAC engine for a second time around T plus 29 minutes. 